Hello poetry lovers and poetry curious. I'm returning once more to the Best American Poetry 2021. So I, I am on Goodreads. I have a group that is going through this and I, I am in charge essentially of just kind of having read one of the poems, I go in there and I just give my general impression of it and I do that two times a week. So it's a very slow poem by poem going through this book. And so I usually do that sometime on the weekend and sometime in the middle to later end of, of a given week. So today, which is Thursday, March, third as I'm uh, recording this and so I thought uh, I need to get into my anthology here and I need to read the next poem and put it up on you know put it up in the Goodreads you know cue anybody else who wants to sometimes others don't really remark on the poem <clears throat> and sometimes people do chime in and give their impressions so, so that's what I did this morning. I read this poem, and I'm going to say my impression is that it is a poem of moral ambiguity. And it appears to have been written in 2020. It is titled Before the Riot. And I assume that this is talking about, um, yeah, in May 2020. So the, um, and now his name just went out of my head, out of my head. It's crazy that I have to write these things down when they're clear in my head a moment ago. George Floyd. Duh. Okay. So, I believe this is written in, in response to that whole situation. Um, in response is maybe the wrong wording, but as I'll say this, as a result of. Um, it could have been written months afterwards or something. And I'm, I'm, I'm deciding to share it because I feel like... I, I read it and I thought it was relevant to the, the Ukrainian moment. And again, I will say that I'm doing this on March 3rd, Thursday. I haven't checked the news extensively to see what where that situation is at. And of course, since it was written for something entirely different, it, it doesn't completely resonate with that. And and certainly in the Ukrainian situation, there's there are parts of it that are not at all morally ambiguous. But there are parts of it that are. And so, um, probably more in the response, or lack of response. And who knows what response is coming. So, yeah. So I'll just, I'll, I'll read this and you can say whether you think it is at all relevant, if you think it's completely different. Um, I'll just read it. It's, I'll read it. Here we go. Before the Riot. This is by Kwame. I don't know if his last name is Dawes or Dawes. Um, it starts with a quote by Bob Marley from what I'm guessing is the song We and Dem. And the quote is, but someone will have to pay for all the innocent blood. On the dreary trudge, the frontier begins. A hundred years later, almost two, 
A woman says in the way of appeasement, Perhaps it is true that for us to live so well, some of them had to die. The question suggested by the nervous lift and inflection at the end of phrase, and who is this us who have lived so well, who are living so well, and how well? So that there is a peculiar justification, a terrible logic, and it is a haunting confession very deep inside the book, though in truth there is no question there. So, it's, I will say this, as somebody reading this poem, that this whole buried deep inside the book, I don't know where that's coming from, and, and the vagueness of this first section is a little bit annoying, but... Um, I think speaking in generalities is intended here to intentionally make it more broad, just as the phrase us versus them is vague but applies to a lot of human behavior. This is its own duplicity, this questioning, this effortless way of speaking the tragic. There has been blood, so much blood, and the rituals of bludgeoning of rust-tanned white men, cliched Western, Westerners, hunters, the stereotypes, the killers of vermin rabbits under wheel of trucks, the people who, the people she knows intimately, like a daughter knows her father, knows her brothers, knows the scent of scotch on her grandfather's breath, the comfort of their manliness, stoic as stone, they will kill, as easily as threaten even the softer bodies of their women. It is a logical equation, a management of ethics. And who are the dead, the slaughtered and the erased? Tribes and tribes whose faces I do not know, though I know that the logic of this pragmatism, this expiation of guilt, but the embrace of guilt as a kind of penance is familiar. And the faces of those bloodshot eyes, skins chalky with deprivation, the weary look of slaves, those faces are as familiar as the panting bodies of the football team strewn on the wide grass undressed in the heat, sweating, bodies broken after pleasure. The familiar look of black bodies coffered by desire and violence, familiar as this. And that saying, the, Darwini the Darwinian logic, perhaps it is true that for us to live so well, some of them had to die offered in the soft voice of a Midwestern woman who never rushes her words, who carries in her throat the secret to receiving mercy, a kind of forgiveness, an expiation of guilt, who we count among those in whose mouth, in whose mouth ice couldn't melt, mouths of tender duplicity. Perhaps, perhaps for us to live as we do and by this I mean we who contemplate anger and bombs and chants today. Perhaps it's true that someone will have to pay, as we say. So, I'm, I'm not going to start delving into to the, the many different meanings, etc. of that. Again, I just, I read that and I felt like sharing it given the moment that we are in. Anybody else can respond to that? It, it does occur to me, maybe I'm unwise to do this. Um, but there it is. There it is. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.